Hi, I'm Sam and welcome to the sort of middle of nowhere. And today I'm gonna to drive a really cool little thing. It is the Healy by Caton. So it's a sort of Austin Healy that's been resto modded, completely redone. And we're gonna have a little look around and then we're gonna go for a drive. I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's not raining at the moment. It was raining earlier. So a uh, sort of speed to start a vehicle could be interesting, but I think we'll be fine. Let's have a little look around the car. It's a pine sized little thing. Essentially they take an Austin Healey, and then work a lot of magic on it. Like a lot. Everything has been looked at, developed, designed. All of the bodywork is hand done, aluminium panels. Everything is like super smooth. They've just tidied up everything. Like got this lovely shapes here, cleaned up. There's no sort of hinges and whatnot on the boot. Just a really nice sort of organic looking shape. You can see some of my some of my camera gear and whatnot, and it's basically super super simple inside. Um, the switch, there's a few development bits and whatnot still in progress on this particular car, but they've one of the things they've replaced the indicator. So this is the indicator, and this used to be I think a very plasticky number. Now it's a lovely bit of aluminium with a nice click. So what have we got? What are we talking about? Well, the car weighs 920 kilos. It it's got the original block from a Healy, but completely sort of redeveloped and now produces 180 brake horsepower, which should be reasonably quick, I think. And in that process, the engine's been lightened, balanced, stripped down, refurbished, bought out to 2954 cc and uprated with, what have we got? Full steel crankshaft, upgraded bearing shells, high compression pistons, performance camshaft, and a more aggressive low profile and roller rockers. Essentially, it's been jazzed up. And it should it has a power to weight ratio of 195 brake horsepower per ton, which is a reasonable amount. But the key number, I think, is the 920 kilos. So it should be a light experience. It's small, where we've got some small windy roads to go down. And I think this is gonna be a bit of a laugh. Let's have a look. The fog in there, this lights are being changed. Somehow it's not their part and it's, Something's gone wrong with it, but they're, they're swapping it out. So that will be sorted in the final car. Um, yeah, let's have a little look in the back. Got my gear and whatnot. So to get in the boot, we have a procedure. We go in here and then there's a lever. And then we've got the boot. Quite a nice size boot. You get a reasonable amount, you get a couple of bags in there, some weekend stuff. Definitely do a longer trip, no problem. And then to get in the front, there's a leak. And then this goes up. And here is the little engine, all nicely done in there actually. Everything's super clean. But the most important thing I think is uh, to go for a bit of a drive. So let's get in the car, fire it up and go for a bit of a drive. <laughs> I'm going to cover this up. I don't know whether you can hear me that well, but immediately I'm going to put my sunglasses on, smile on my face driving this. Small little car. I feel slightly odd not having a seatbelt on. Dominated by the sounds. Oh! Oh! It's warming up. <laughs> I'm sure the camera here is going to be shaking a lot and I don't know how well the audio will come out. Hopefully it's sort of hidden a little bit, but I am out in the elements. That's four. A little blip. Oh, a little blip. It's a bit of old schoolness, I would say, in the steering. It, it, it feels like there's play, but actually, the car is moving. I think it's just a bit of sidewall and whatnot. I've no idea what speed I'm doing, although, you know, it says, actually it says down here I'm doing 50, and it feels super fast. What's the aim with this car? Well, let's just have a drive and then I'll stop. <laughs> oh, the pedals line up so nicely, and you can hear by the... <laughs> the most 
almost a sort of like zingy of engines, if that makes sense. Like it's not a screamer, but the response when you play with the throttle. <laughs> I'm sort of really down in the low. Oh, we've got five gears. Let's try fifth gear. So yeah, the initial vagueness I was worried about with the gearbox is actually completely fine. Oh, it's warming up now and we're getting some pops and bangs from the exhaust. <laughs> I came down this road in my E63 and it's a lot more fun. There's definitely a sketchiness factor by feeling like I've got no seatbelts, but I'm feeling like I've got no seatbelts. Oh, oh, slightly damp. Got to be a little bit careful here. Let's find somewhere to pull over and I can give you some initial thoughts. Woof, woof. Had the first bit of a drive in this little beauty. It is such a lovely thing to drive around. Oh, got my heart rate going a little bit, I have to say. So skinny, skinny tires and uh, a bit of wet and uh, no ABS is uh, slightly, slightly interesting, but yeah, you've just got to remember what you're in really, I think. You've got to remember. It is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And a lot of fun at like 50 miles an hour. Things that I can think of would be the steering, the steering, I would say, I'm just used to super modern stuff, but it's totally different. It's, it feels like there's loads of play, but it's not. You can tell immediately, as soon as you start moving it, that you're starting moving the tire. I think it's just the fact that we've got massive sidewalls and all the, all the stuff in between you putting that turning input and the car turning. So you've got to be really delicate. I think I've got to really slow down my movements, be really deliberate. The engine response is brilliant. It's, you just like that gear shift, instantly you're like poof, poof, poof on the down changes. Yeah, it's, um, it's not, not crazy fast or anything. When you warm it up, you start to get these, pops and bangs and he's like poof, 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 which is <laughs> makes you smile but, I mean look at it it's just that really cool thing immediately I had someone saying oh mate that's a really cool car and I was like thank you very much it's not mine but very cool I agree and let's get back in the car and go for a bit more of a drive I have to get some sort of convertible roof down motoring. It's just so nice. Even now, people say in the UK, like, don't, you know, why would you ever have the roof down? The answer is all the time. It's just so nice having the roof down. What would I get? I don't know. Something like this, this would be a lot of fun. Different cars offer different experiences, don't they? There's no catch all. It's funny, actually, I'm behind a Boxster and a Boxster would probably be quite good. They've not got their roof down, actually. They've got a hard roof on, which is an interesting, I think a lot of people do. They're pooling along. And this bit is a key part. Whoa! There's another Boxster. That's obviously a very popular car, isn't it? I need to find somewhere to stop and take a few photos. It's funny getting out such. What's next? Talk about the size, look at it. It's tiny. Going down a road in that is, you've just got so much space. These tiny little back B roads that we've been zipping down, just pretty great to be honest. I'm very much enjoying the drive. What's the suspension like? A bit old school, not super well, like, it's obviously not gonna drive like a modern car, but it's fun. I don't, it doesn't feel like it's sketchy in any way or anything like that. It's just quite nice, deals with bumps. You've got so much tire wall as well that ride is really good. It, moving in the seat, if it's a bit disconcerting, I'm not really used to that because no seatbelt or anything, not locked in, but I'm having a lot of fun. You can see I've got a bit of a smile on my face and I'm really appreciating having no roof. It's great. It's great. It makes me think I need some sort of convertible spider thing, but for sure. Right, let's get back in the car and do a bit more driving. Now, every time I get back in the car, I shut the door and I'm like, Oh, how do I put my seatbelt on? <laughs> Completely. <laughs> you don't. Right, let's get off. 
it's funny, one of the things that I find I'm doing in this car is I'm very much driving to how I feel, is what I feel is the right speed, which turns out to be about the right speed, but like if, if I go too fast, I immediately, my body goes like, nah, what are you doing? This is sketchy as hell. So I slow down and uh, it's quite nice actually. I'm not worried about hitting a certain speed because I'm always driving under the speed limit pretty much. I'm sure as you get more comfortable with the car that you would do that a bit less. Just cruising along, lovely. On these damp roads, you want to be a bit careful, I think, in, in something like this. You just can't, you can stop, just not modern car quickly. And you've got no ABS. So yeah, it's not bad though. That downshift, I love that. Fourth to third, like, fourth. Hey! What's not to like? Third to second. Oh, I could have done that one a bit better. <laughs> what sort of range are you going to get out of this car? Well, it apparently it's got a 100 litre fuel tank. Estimated, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 MPG. That'll keep you going. Reasonable amount of range. But, like, it's not about that. It's about that. And that. And this is me driving from the left of the lane to the right of the lane, and now I'm on the right of the lane, and now I'm on the left lane. That's like a whole corner. In my E63, you're about to, you can probably move it about that much, and then you're touching both sides. It's an experience. I am driving this car, and I am following a Range Rover that's going about two miles an hour. But, engine's quite tractable it's not all super toppy if I was in <laughs> I can see a lot of value in driving this age configuration of car change down second flip it manage <laughs> you can't fake that smile. Now maybe I just like driving a lot of cars. I like driving, but I like that. I like that. And I like the connection between the gear stick and the car and the engine and the, the steering. It's a bit more of an older experience this. And I think as, th as daily drivers and whatnot get more and more of sort of boring and electric and just numb. You want an event. So thank you very much for letting me have a go. And I'm gonna stop in a second. What do I think about the Healy by Caton? Well, the price, price is it's just under 400K, I think, depending on spec and it's all this lovely hand. Everything's just, it's a very nice thing. So if you think it's worth it, you think it's worth it? Some people might, some people will. Whatever, that's up for the potential buyers to decide, I think. And, you know, what's it about? Well, I think, for me, these sorts of cars are about the experience you're after. You know, you want something where you're doing all the shifts, you know, that blip from fourth to third, third to second, the connection with the engine and the throttle pedals and everything is such a nice, like, snappy, you feel like you're getting an instant connection to the car which puts a smile on your face funnily enough and it's a lot of fun it's, a, it's an older sort of experience than your modern car so I think that's probably who maybe would lean towards something like this but um, it's put a big smile on my face I, I, I have to have a convertible in my life and this vibe I think one of the amazing things about this vibe is you don't have to be going very fast at all for it to be fun and I like pretty much at no point in that drive. Now it is wet, so that helped a little bit. Did I actually speed? Because I felt like I was going fast enough and sketchy enough. Like 60 feels really fast with you hanging around in your seat and whatnot. So I didn't want to go any faster. And that in today's world with this sort of space 
is a really cool thing. So thank you very much to these guys for lending me the car. I'll hopefully get someone on the podcast at some point to chat more about the whole process and whatnot. And I know I haven't necessarily gone into all the specific details of everything. Someone else will have done a video on that. For me, it's just a feeling like, what do I get from this car? So thank you very much for watching and see you guys in the next video.